After 10,000 years of struggling through the tundra, these Arctic hunters hit the jackpot. As the ice gave way to the rolling prairies, they found a new land in which to live and prosper. Their numbers swelled, and in only 800 years, they had peopled both North and South America. I'm off to meet an ancient tribe who traced their family line back to Siberia, to the ancestors of the Chukchi who made that first migration into the Americas. They're the Navajo, and they live here in Canyon de Chez, Arizona. The Navajo Indians have been living in North America ever since their Chukchi ancestors first arrived. Canyon de Chez is one of their most sacred sites. I wanted to tell them about the genetic trail that had led me to them. That's a migration. If we believe that we were created here in the Four Sacred Mountain area, this is where we came up from the ground. In other words, we were birthed into this place, just like we are all birthed by our mother. I also have my own sense of what that story might be using science. I'm a geneticist. And everybody around the world is very closely related to each other. Mm -hmm. We're all part of one big family. In fact, we're all related to people who lived in Africa as recently as 50,000 years ago. That's only about 2,000 generations. Mm -hmm. So you have distant relatives living all over the world who are essentially African. Mm -hmm. And you yourselves are essentially African. So am I. Can I show you some pictures of some yeah. of the people we've met? Yeah. These are people known as the San Bushmen who live in southern Africa. And they are some of the oldest people on the planet. Africa are these the people that have that, 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 that clicking, clicking sound? Clicking, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, exactly. Mm -hmm. Fascinating people. Now, the evidence is that the first people who left Africa followed a coastal migration route along uh -huh. the south coast of Asia, and they ended up in Australia, the Australian Aborigines. We visited them. So you're basing this on the genetic trail. Exactly. <laughs> mm. Now these people who were in Australia, they mainly were more together as a, a group. You know, like more cohesive. More cohesive. And uh, there are lots of different populations in Australia, speaking uh -huh. very different languages. They have different cultures, okay. different myths. Why do you call something that uh, a people will tell you a myth? as opposed to an experience that they had and they relive it over and over. Rather than calling it a myth, would be able to call it something else because I, I have a real strong feeling yeah. about that. That, you know, if you call something a myth, it's a substandard event that does not that's, that's have any point. relevance because they are real as we understand them. They're not myths. And Absolutely, that's, 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 that's a very good point. And, and my bias as a scientist mm -hmm. is that I'd like to see evidence for things. Yeah, okay. So that was, that was the first migration out of Africa, according to the genetic results mm -hmm. that we found. Now the next one followed a slightly different route, one that went inland. I'm getting pretty good at this. And of course, it helps Central that Asia. I brought the family album along. And this man is a direct descendant of a person who lived in Central Asia about 35 to 40,000 years ago. Wow. And his ancestor is also the ancestor of most Europeans and Native Americans. Wow. He's a man called Niazov, who lives in Kazakhstan. Are you the same person that uh, did some research I noticed on the internet that says that the Native American people are somehow connected to yes. Central Europe? Yes, Central Asia. Central Asia. Yeah, that, that was wow. a paper that we published last year. Okay. That's good to know. What do you think of that? I, uh, I, I, you know, there's, and I was looking at a book from people from Central Asia, and I saw my cousin Emmett and Abraham, yeah. auntie, auntie <laughs> Grandma Buggy, and <laughs> I said, my God, I got family over there in Central Asia. These were the people Mongolian like people. Yeah, these uh -huh. are Central Asians. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's it, right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the eye, he looks like Oriental. And then he's got uh, Negro features to some extent, and also um, uh, Caucasian, kind of all mixed together. So that's interesting, very interesting. These are the Chukchi people, and they're your they're distant still cousins. Siberia. They're still living in northeastern Siberia. I visited them recently. Oh, they're the ones that have With the reindeer. With the reindeer. Reindeer. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've seen them on TV. Their home is... They're, they're yeah, the home looks like a teepee. And the results show that they are your ancestors. They ultimately made that trip across the Bering Strait into the Americas. Wow. 
About how tall were these guys here? Um, about five eight, five, five six, eight. five eight. Yeah, about not tallest. too tall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by looking at the genetic data, we can estimate that as few as ten or possibly twenty people were in that first group, the first wave of migration into the Americas. Yeah. yeah. My story about the journey of man came as no surprise to these Navajo. The idea of migration had been central to their own creation story since the beginning of time. <laughs> 